Hey, welcome guys. This video we're doing a review of the 7th gen iPad, which comes in a new 10.2 inch screen, which breaks away from the very familiar and traditional 9.7 inch screen. I'll also be answering the question later on in this video, is it worth getting this new iPad if you have the 6th generation version? I think it's very interesting that Apple has shifted away from the traditional 9.7 inch screen for the iPad. I think this is because they want to make it more like a laptop replacement, which I'll get into later on. But it could also be just simply a marketing gimmick, which again, I'll get into a lot more detail. To look at in terms of appearance is a tad bit disappointing. Uh, this is due to the thick bezels and that home button still taking up a fair amount of space on the bottom bar of the front facing side. Apple missed the mark here when it could have taken some positive notes from the body design of the iPhone which has some near bezel-less designs. For weight it feels okay in the hand but that's because you have a metal backing which kind of makes it a much more sturdy body, it feels pretty good in the hands. Um, but what's interesting is that because it's so similar in size to the 6th generation version, is that if someone was holding this new version, you wouldn't be able to tell which one they're using. Again, thanks to that very strong, sturdy body, which does have some recycled parts, uh, which Apple's trying to help on the environment with, uh, it feels pretty sturdy um, in the hands. It's not going like, to break easily if it was in your bag while you're traveling, for example. The display has a resolution of 2160 by 1620 and is an LED backlit with IPS technology display. It's an incredible display with nice crisp detail, decent amount of lighting uh, output, and colors look pretty great as well. And of course, not to forget, if you have some people huddled around the screen or you're showing someone something, uh, it does have some pretty decent viewing angles. There's one big disappointment about the screen and that the iPad is still rocking a 4x3 ratio. I'm not sure if the logic here was to make it better to view websites, but websites look just fine on other devices with a 16x9 display. All the iPad screen ratio does is lose out on real estate when watching videos with those huge black bars on the top and bottom. On the right is the volume rocker and the top is the power button. Alas, on the front is the huge unsightly home button, which also acts like a fingerprint reader. However, as you would expect from an Apple device, the fingerprint reading speed is top notch. On the left are some magnetic connectors for a smart keyboard to kind of use this as a laptop. Although, to buy that keyboard here in Canada, it's a whopping $219. Uh, so I suggest don't buying it directly from Apple, maybe wait for Logitech or someone else to make that accessory cheaper. There are dual speakers on the bottom which perform just okay. I feel like the competition for tablets is getting a little bit better in terms of sound output. But let's take a listen from about 7 feet away at max volume. Additional apps. I couldn't find how much storage is included in the TV for memory, but there is a software cleanup function where you can Scrap. Let's take a point where Apple could have taken huge advantage of those ugly bezels at the top and the bottom of the screen. They could have actually had the speakers front facing instead. This would have been a great opportunity to utilize it. Unfortunately, they missed the mark there. For some reason, Apple decided to put an 8 megapixel rear camera, which is pretty much useless. The picture quality is just awful as there's a lot of grainy noise in the picture, even if there's good lighting conditions. On top of that, recording is a mere 1080p at 30 frames a second. Okay, so all audio and video is being recorded from the front-facing 1.2 megapixel camera, which as you can see is absolutely terrible and awful. To be honest, I don't even know why the rear-facing camera exists on any tablet. What Apple should have done is use the 8 megapixel cameras on the back as the front-facing camera instead and just use no rear-facing camera at all. This shouldn't exist on a tablet. And maybe that extra little space to kind of maybe expand the battery into that side of the port, but alas, this is what you're stuck with. Load on the tablet out of the box is the new iPad OS version 13. Wait, it's new, but it's version 13? How does that make any sense? Well, it's basically iPad OS branching off from iOS version 12. The, this is like the dedicated operating system for uh, iPads now. So you'll notice that it looks very similar to iOS phones. Um, nothing's really changed here in the last 10 years, which is a bad, bad thing. The interface is extremely dull and boring. It's been like this for almost 10 years now, whereas Android and Windows devices always allowed their customers to customize things visually as much as they wanted to since the beginning. The only real noticeable difference here on the home screen is that the widgets on the far left remain present while you're looking at your app's listing. But once you swipe over to the right, they disappear. I think it's great that Apple is trying to stem away from the traditional iOS and trying to make the iPad kind of like a laptop replacement. Even though iPad OS is very new, there's still a lot of polishing needed, but I think this is a good first step uh, that they're taking in terms of multitasking and some of the other features I'll show you. 
I mean, if you think about it, the iPad is pretty good for day-to-day -day use, for productivity. If you need to maybe, you know, write up a document, work on a spreadsheet, uh, if you're more of the creative, artful type, you know, you can do some art stuff on it. Uh, you can watch videos and so on and so forth. To help with productivity are some multitasking features. While in full screen viewing app, you can swipe one up from the app drawer uh, to bring it up as kind of like a floating window. And you can move it from the left to the right side of the screen, or you can drag it over to the far right, which makes it disappear or bring it back. Um, swiping over this floating window will actually allow you to see other ones that you've used very recently. Another multitasking feature is dual view mode, which takes up the entire screen of both apps, uh, which allows you to use them, you know, pretty much full screen side by side. And there's an adjustment bar for adjusting the side. I find this app adjustment feature and in terms of scaling the size to be really smooth uh, and really well polished and done. The really annoying thing about the multitasking feature, either one, is that the app has to be in your app drawer and you have to drag it up. Uh, this is an odd decision which could become rather annoying to some users. In addition to that, I notice that sometimes it doesn't work. It's kind of like you got swiping up, swiping up, tripping the app, but instead it does nothing. Or sometimes the iPad OS will actually think you're trying to swipe up to close the app and it does that instead. It's kind of annoying. It needs some polishing. Uh, hopefully in the next version will be fixed. iPad OS also forces websites to open in desktop mode, which in many cases is a welcome change. It's great. But in many websites, it doesn't play too nice. For example, Rotten Tomatoes. I'm forced to zoom out to view the entire website properly, but doing so makes websites text too small to view. So I think this wasn't really the greatest thing to do on such a small screen size. It's only 10 inches. If you think about it, it's still pretty small at the end of the day. File manager for external storage devices connected works great. You have the ability to view files, move them to the iPad, compress them. So it's a full proper file management system, which is way overdue, but welcomed. Uh, addition to iPad OS. Sidecar mode basically allows you to take your Mac, which is running Catalina at the very least as the operating system, and use your iPad as a second screen. This is fantastic for people that travel a lot and carry a MacBook of some kind and an iPad. You have dual screens with you pretty much all the time. It's fantastic. Text editing has been improved. For instance, double tapping will select a word. Three taps selects an entire sentence. An entire paragraph can be selected with four taps. It works pretty good. Now, there are some other features like pinching in with three fingers will cut text and pinching out with three fingers will paste it, but it's really finicky. It doesn't work properly. Sometimes it does nothing. Uh, sometimes it'll accidentally zoom in the text. Uh, it's kind of annoying. Again, this needs polishing, but I like the idea. Inside powering everything is a snappy A10 processor. Snappy, but the same old processor used from the previous 6th gen iPad. Yep, nothing's really changed there. This is a big miss by Apple, especially if they want the iPad to be taken seriously as a possible laptop replacement device. However, moving along, playing higher end mobile and games that have uh, better graphics than the others, it works decent enough. Helping with the multitasking is 3 gigs of RAM, which sounds like a little compared to Android devices, but this is a very good thing. And I say this because it's more than enough RAM and it also means less battery being drained faster compared to Android devices. Speaking of battery, the 8827mAh battery is phenomenal. It is truly something amazing for something this compact. I was able to get a week's usage while using it for hours a day to watch videos, browse the web, check email and documents. Um, it's still one of the tablet's strongest features and one of the best things about the iPad compared to the competition. Alas, to recharge it, it still uses lightning port, whereas USB-C should have been implemented. Not only that, recharging it takes hours and hours. From 1% to 100%, it takes more than a whopping 4 hours to fully charge this device, which is way too long. While well, Android competition has fast charging for years implemented in their tablets. So it's great for traveling with, especially if you travel often, it's great because the battery lasts for hours. Ironically, because it charges so slow, it's horrible for traveling with because it's really hard to charge it on the go. For connectivity, there's Wi-Fi 5, GPS, and Bluetooth. It would have been preferred to have Wi-Fi 6, but this is something that Apple seemed to have rushed to just get the product out, uh, and they really missed the mark on here and explain what Wi-Fi 6 is in a different video. Another lacking spec is that the base model only comes with 32 gigs of internal storage space, and there's no micro SD card slot, so you can't expand it, which is pretty unacceptable in 2019. So to answer the question I promised I would, if you have the 6th gen iPad, should you buy the 7th gen iPad? The answer is absolutely no. Do not do it, save your money, you're just fine. Battery performance is almost the same, they have the exact same processor, they have almost the exact same looking body, the only difference is that the new version that I'm reviewing now has a 
bigger screen size of like what this much difference hardly noticeable um, save your money I don't know why Apple released this tablet I think for them it was like they were gonna announce iPad OS but they needed something in addition to release and announce they need to really push the stock market prices up so how did they do that release a new iPad that is almost exactly the same as the previous one but the screen size is like this much difference in size and people say it's a brand new version which technically it is but I think it was just more of a marketing gimmick Look, at the end of the day, this is still a rock solid tablet. It's almost identical to the previous version, so it's very disappointing that Apple didn't put much effort here, but it's still worth checking out. If you don't have the previous version iPad, the 6th gen, get this one. I do have to admit that despite a lot of the parts being reused, you know, the same processor, the same screen almost, except for that marginal size difference, almost everything exactly the same, and it's a pretty ugly looking tablet because, well, it has those massive bezels. It's still a great bang for buck purchase, so definitely worth checking out. Hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, be sure to check out my social links in the video description. Hit that like button, it does help. Subscribe and thanks for watching.